Here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering it's surgical and optimization, kindly tell me what are, what are the bones that you're looking at? Can you identify certain bones? Yes, I'm uh, looking at the hip bone. All right. Yes, the, and the and sacrum. Can you describe the hip bone that you're looking at? What is this? Uh, pointed structure called the the which pointed structure mom yes. uh, i'm showing you here this arrow this line is pointing at something what is it called okay it's called the iliac crest um, can you tell me the muscles yes, iliac crest. yeah muscles which gives uh, iliac crest gives attachment to uh, muscles, the iliacus, and the and the psoas. Is, are these the only ones? And the pectineus. Okay. What about uh, all right? What about the medias, luteus medias, minimus, and Yes, the gluteus medius maximus. maximus and the maximus. No, just the maximus takes origin from here, iliac crest. Yes. Others take uh, origin from the back of the. It doesn't take origin from the iliac crest, but takes origin from the hip bone, right? This is what I wanted you to tell me. All right, can you tell me? Uh, yes. Yes, can you please tell me? Which muscle is this? Can you identify the muscle, please? Okay, that's the gluteus uh, medius. Okay, and then uh, here, this one, the big bulk that you're looking at. That's the gluteus maximus. Are you sure? Okay. Moving here. On the right hand side, now my cursor is pointing at muscles. Can you uh, can you identify the muscle? Okay, that's the gluteus minimus. Okay, can you please tell me these are three muscles in up one, two, and three, right? And the fourth one. Can you identify these muscles? Please. Okay, the 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 one on top is the piriformis. Yes. And then the one just below it is the superior gamellus, and the one between them is the obturator internus, and the one just below it is the inferior gamellus. Okay. Piriformis, gamellus, and gamellus superior, inferior, and quadratus gamellus. Okay. Can you please tell me how uh, the muscles of the gluteal region are arranged? In with how many layers, if you can kindly tell me? They are arranged in uh, in two in three layers. Okay. The gluteus maximus above, then the gluteus medius, then the uh, the short rotate uh, lateral rotators of the hip. Then continue, please. Okay, so yes. then you have the uh, the gamellus 
which are in between the obturator internus and the piriformis and the quadratus femoris above and below it respectively. Okay. Right. Can you tell me their nerve supply, please? You're going very slow. I want you to tell me quickly, like in a... Okay, the nerve supply to the oh, obturator internus. Yes, please. Okay, the nerve supply uh, to the obturator internus is the nerve to obturator internus. Yes. And then the superior and inferior gamelus, uh, the superior one is supplied by the nerve to obturator internus, while the inferior one and the quadriceps femoris are supplied by nerve to quadriceps femoris. Then the piriformis is, uh, is uh, inhibited by nerve to piriformis. Yes. While gluteus medius, gluteus minimus is by the superior gluteal nerve, and gluteus maximus is by the inferior gluteal nerve. All right. Can you please tell me? Okay. Next question. Can you please identify this circled one? What is three, please? Okay, that's the head of the femur. Okay. Can you identify number two, please? Number two. Yes, please. Okay, that's the so in greater to canter. Uh, right, in this one, six. Six, six is the lesser to canter. Four, please. Oh, six is the, uh, six is the neck of the femur. Four, please. Then four is the uh, intertrochanteric line, intertrochanteric line. Okay, is it nine or press? Okay, what is nine, please? Sorry, nine is here. Nine this is, is the five. gluteal five and, and nine. burst. Quickly. Yes. yes. Uh, what is this five, please? Five is the lesser trochanter. Nine is that one is the lesser trochanter. Eleven. Uh, Eleven. Eleven is the. Eleven is the trochanteric fossa. Three. Three is the head of the femur. All right. Moving here on uh, on the right hand side to picture one. What is one? Picture C. Sorry. What is one? One. Yes, please. One here. I can't see one, ma. In picture C on the right hand 44 side. Forty-four is the yes. head of the femur. Yes. Uh, is it four? Yeah, yes, four I'm is the sorry. head of the femur. It's four. My eyes. Okay, uh, right. How is this? Sorry. This is eight, I think. Yes, eight, please. Eight is the lesser trochanter. Okay. Can you tell me, please, how the uh, how the hip joint is formed? Okay, the hip joint is formed by three uh, three bones. Okay. Can you please tell me, please? Uh, the ilium, the ischium, and then the uh, the sacral uh, vertebrae. No. And then uh, there is the also the sorry the hip bone is formed by the. You are telling me yes wrong hip sorry. bone. The the hip I joint. asked you the hip joint. I'm telling you the pelvis cell. The hip joint is formed by the femur and the uh, the head of the femur actually. If I ask the, you uh, how the pelvic girdle is formed, then that is to be another question. My simple question was how hip joint was formed. What type of joint is a hip joint? The hip joint is a, it's a synovial uh, joint. Bowl and socket type of synovial joint, yes. Can you tell me yes. what are the movements which are present on the hip joints? And the movements allowed in the hip joint, uh, there is flexion, extension, internal and external rotation. There's abduction and adduction. Okay. What are the muscles which are responsible for the abduction, uh, uh, abduction of the hip joint? Abduction of the hip joint is by the abductors of the hip. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, namely? The abductor longus. Abductor. Yes. Abductor longus, abductor magnus. All right, can you tell me? Uh, Dr. Longus Magnus and Brevis. How the blood supply of the head of the femur differs from adult to children? 
blood the head of the female has uh, blood supply from the medial and lateral extramural arteries, which are the reticular blood uh, arise from the ascending cervical branches and from the extra capsular arterial anastomosis. And also has another blood supply from the uh, from the artery to the ligamentum teres, which supplies the femoral head. So okay, the reticular the, the reticular arteries are. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Right. Right. So if you have read and understood, well, just when, in considering this surgical anastomosis, kindly mm. tell me if you can identify the bones that you're looking at in front of you. Uh, yeah. this is, uh, can you speak a little louder? I can hardly hear you. Please. Yeah, ma'am, this is this is scapula, okay. Can you identify what this two is, please? In this is a eight. chromian. Okay, one, please. A chromian angle. All right, what is 10, please? Spine of scapula. Okay. Can you please tell me what are the muscles which are inserted here above and here below? Uh, okay, above is uh, inserted supraspinatus in supraspinous fossa and yes. below is infraspinatus in infraspinous fossa. What are their origin uh, and insertions and their nerve supply, please? Oh, okay, ma'am. Uh, so, supraspinous originates uh, from uh, supraspinous fossa on the dorsal spectro scapula. Okay. And infraspinous from infraspinous fossa on the lower dorsal spectrum of the scapula, and uh, uh, they both uh, are inserted into the greater to grass tube. Very good. Of yes, and their nerve supply, please. Uh, nerve supply is uh, by the uh, supra scapular nerve. nerve. Very good. Okay. Can you please tell me briefly how the sh shoulder girdle is formed? Uh, shoulder girdle is formed uh, by the uh, scapula, glenoid uh, cavity of the scapula with the humerus forming the inner humeral joint and uh, uh, a chromial end of the clavicle uh, joining with the uh, chromium of uh, scapula. Yes. And uh, forming a chromio clavicular joint and uh, as a whole then it would act as a shoulder girdle. Good. Can you tell me uh, there are certain group of muscles which are called rotator cuff muscles? Can you tell me which muscles are those? Okay. Uh, so rotator cuff muscles are supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. Yes. All right. What is the function of these muscles? Rotator cuff muscles. Uh, okay. Okay, a subscapularis does the internal rotation of the arm and okay. has a role in stability of the arm. And uh, then there is infraspinatus and period minor. These do the external rotation of the arm. And uh, uh, then there is supraspinatus, which, do, which is the abductor of the arm from the 0 to 15 uh, degree 
majorly and also do the external rotation and have some role in the stability of the eye. Very good. Okay, can you please tell me, uh, right, there are certain factors which decrease the stability of the shoulder joint. Can you name a few factors, please? Uh, all right, so if the stability will be decreased, if there would be lax capsule or fewer ligaments uh, of the shoulder joints and shallow glean eye cavity, and if there would be uh, a, uh, it, it is also decreased by the presence of the quadrangular space on the inferior aspects. All right, good. Right, right. Can you please tell me what, uh, which muscles are responsible for the abduction of the shoulder joint? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, um, abduction of the shoulder joint uh, is performed by the three uh, sets of muscles. Very good. Uh, are three, uh, uh, First of all, there is supraspinatus from uh, abductor, abduction, which will uh, do the abduction from 0 to 15 degree, and okay. then middle fibers of the deltoid from yes. 15 and, uh, uh, to 19, to 19 yes. degree, and then our 19 degree will be by the serratus, area, and trapezius, and uh, uh, there would also be a uh, role of the scapula of outward and upward movement in the uh, uh, abduction above 90 degrees. Very good, very good. Okay, right. What type of joint is shoulder joint? Uh, shoulder joint is ball and socket joint. Yes. Synovial. Yes, synovial. Synovial ball and socket. Right, can you please uh, tell me what kind of image are you looking at? Uh, uh, this is MR uh, coronal oblique. Uh, uh, of uh, shoulder image of the shoulder yes can you identify the blue circled uh, structures three blues uh, yeah Number one four and five please uh, number four would be uh, clavicle number one would be a chromium of scapula and number five would be deltoid yes Okay, can you tell me this blue arrow is pointing at number six? What does that identify or signify? Uh, yeah, yeah maybe. number six. It, it shows eye cavity. Okay, in which conditions would you recommend a patient to go for MR, MR arthrogram of the shoulder joint? When uh, there is no uh, significant features on the X ray. Yes. Uh, when I wouldn't be able to find the, uh, on the X-ray, and uh, there would be uh, rotator cuff or a muscles rupture. Yes. And uh, to rule out that and find out, I will uh, order the MR of the or uh, arthrogram of shoulder. Good. Would you be able to tell me the surface marking of coracoid process since we are doing shoulder joint? Please. Coracoid process. Yes. All Here, right. uh, uh, if you are looking at the centimeter. image, can you identify which number is this? Uh, ma'am, I can't see it clearly. I think it is number four. Uh, okay. Just behind the chromium. Right. Can you please uh, tell me the surface marking then? Thank you. Yeah. So, coracoid process could be two centimeters inferior to the joining of the uh, middle and the third of the clavicle. Yes. All right, can you please name few muscles or few uh, structures, not just muscles, or few structures, both muscles and ligaments, which are attached to the coracoid process, please? Okay, um, so there are uh, some ligaments and muscles which attach to the coracoid process. And yes, please. The uh, uh, ligaments and ligaments. Mainly, ligament and uh, muscles are uh, the insertion of the uh, pectoralis minor yes. and origin of the uh, short head of bicep. Yes. And uh, origin of the uh, correct. Very good. Uh, okay. Correct brachialis. Yes, very good. Can, uh, there are certain reflexes of upper limb which are part of most of the examinations that we carry out, clinical examinations. Can you name few reflexes of the upper limb, please? Yeah. So, 
there is uh, supinator reflex uh, yes cesis and uh, there is tricep where is it done and bicep reflex c5 c6 yes uh, supinator, uh, supinator reflex, reflex where is it done 4 cm proximal yes 4 cm proximal to the base of the thumb very good and bicep and, reflex uh, uh, Bicep reflex is done in the anti-cubital fossa. Very good. Uh, to do that, I will uh, place my horizontal finger and will strike yes. that with the hammer, and there will be flexion of the arm, the forearm. Very and, good. Uh, Lastly, yes. Uh, for bicep, uh, I will hold the arm in the yes. 90 degree flexion. Yes. And uh, then I will strike at the posterior, uh, posterior head uh, of the elbow joint. Uh, posterior, I'm sorry. Posterior arm, uh, uh, closer to olecra nine, at the tendon of the tricep, and uh, I will uh, strike at my hammer at my hand, and there will be uh, extension yes. of the uh, flex down. Yes, very good. Thank yes. you. Start with your timer, and here is your question. Right. If you have read and understood, considering the surgical pathologist patient, kindly tell me what are the differential diagnoses that you will consider for this patient? For this patient, I will consider uh, tuber uh, pulmonary tuberculosis, uh, non Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, infectious mononucleosis. Okay, good. Can you tell me how do you plan to proceed? What are the investigations that you'll ask for? For the investigation? Yes. I think uh, I will get a license, a carter sensitivity, as well as a current scene for TV. Yes. Okay. If you are asked to do histological uh, investigation, so what are the histological features that one should look out for? Uh, I should look out for uh, giant cell coagulation tissue, cases, necrosis of PCR cells with histiocytes. Yes. Uh, right. Uh, okay, this option. There are certain zones as well that you'll also look for. Uh, yeah, central, uh, central zone is uh, resorption zones. Uh, from central to outward, uh, resorption zones, granulation zone, and maturation, yes. mature connective tissue. Yes. Can you tell me what are the foam cells? Foam cells, uh, multinucleated, uh, combination of uh, multinucleated macrophages. No, they're the soluble fat in lysosomal vacuoles. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Okay, can you tell me if you have to, if you have to confirm your diagnosis and you do the histological uh, test, and the appearance, how would the appearance of tuberculosis be in the histological uh, sample? Um, for TB, the histological appearance will be uh, KTS central necrosis. Yes. With and granulation, with uh, granuloma, giant yes. cells. Giant cells, yes, very important. Okay, is it fast SLI as well? Okay, yeah, what, other, so. what other test can you do in order to confirm your diagnosis of tuberculosis? Uh, we can do interferon gamma assay, yes. right? Box yes. test, yes, uh, PCR to differentiate mycobacteria and tuberculosis for other species, yes. All right, can you tell me how the Montauk's test is done or carried out? 
uh, uh, can I come back to this question later? Yes, sir. Uh, right. Can you tell me if you have to do the sputum examination in order to determine or confirm the diagnosis for tuberculosis, how many sputum samples would you ask for? Early morning sputum. Yes, um, but how many samples? Would at least two. At least two, very good. Okay. Right. Can you tell me, uh, yes, how would you define granuloma? Granuloma. Granuloma is a uh, central cases, necrosis, of, uh, surrounded by uh, giant cells at yes. a level size. Yes. Can you name a few conditions in which there is presence of granuloma, but patient is not suffering from tuberculosis? Uh, leprosy, sarcoidosis. So, very good. Okay, all right. Very good. Can you please tell me what are the different types of tuberculosis that you know of? Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Yes. Uh, my, um, Sorry, mycobacterium, mycobacteria, bovis, mycobacteria, leprae, and MEI, uh, mycobacteria, what type of organism is mycobacterium? It's weakly gram positive, uh, acid for specialized, uh, rot shaped. Okay, once you collect the samples, you have to be very careful with them. Can you tell me what is the ideal way of labeling the sputum specimens? according to NHS guidelines? It should be labeled by, labeled into category B, UN3373. Yes, okay, very good. Uh, where would you put them? In biohazard bag. All right. And what are these, uh, okay, these, these medium, uh, the culture media for the microbacteria? Both uh, for, for solid, solid media. Yes. Yes. Yeah, for solid media, uh, Los Angeles media, uh, Middlebrook media. Yes. Uh, for liquid, it is bacteria and uh, antigen. Do you think? Do you agree uh, agree with this statement or not that the tuberculosis is considered a public health concern? Yes, it is a public health concern. Yes. We have to inform the CDC. Yes. Communicable and, disease control. Yes, and? Communicable disease uh, control, and that uh, stops the patient from walking at uh, full preparation areas. And, uh, ask the patient to wear, always wear max one coffee sneezing and get the tracing uh, of the patient, of the people who have been in contact with the patients. Okay, right. What would be your advice to the, to the people who come in contact with the patients of tuberculosis? Yes, we have to do counseling yes. and then screening of the patients and giving treatment as necessary. Right. Can you tell me what is the management that you can offer to a patient who is suffering from tuberculosis? We give a directly offset treatment, short course therapy, DOTS, uh, for, we give HRZ uh, for fast two bands and then uh, for the last, uh, for the last four months, we give H and R. All right. Can you please tell me if a patient does not respond to the normal tuberculosis management, what options can you offer or what can you do? So if a patient shows resistance to anti-tuberculosis drugs, then what measures would you take? What would you do? Um, can I come back to this later? Okay, sure. Right. Uh, what were the okay? What is the most common type of uh, tuberculosis which is present in uh, UK? Mm -hmm. I think it is uh, gastrointestinal type. Yes, gastrointestinal. Because the tuberculosis of lung is mostly secondary. What is the mode of spread of tuberculosis? Can you tell me? Sorry, the most mode of spread. Of tuberculosis? Uh, more suppressed is by droplet spread. Yes, very good. Okay, right. Can you tell me what is the rapid detection method uh, used for mycobacterium? Volume 
polymerase polymerase chain amplification yes very good okay if uh, you have done a uh, fine needle aspiration and the result shows necrotic tissues histiocytes giant cells what would be your diagnosis necrotic cells and histiocytes uh, Above close. It, uh, to close. Yeah. Because you told me in the definition. Yes. <laughs> before, so don't get. Uh, I was Can confused you... about why, uh, what yeah. kind of necrosis. One was, last yeah. question. Can you tell me how long uh, does the tuberculosis culture take? It's four to six weeks. Very good. Okay. Can you please tell me what is proteinous substance that can be found systematically in tuberculosis? Protein. Um, Sorry. H amyloid. Ah, oh, amyloid. A amyloid. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, let's go on. So we'll end. Okay, good. There were two, three questions that you said you'll come back to them. So kindly read PubMed articles recently published on tuberculosis. Yes and try to find the answers for them. Right, good, thank you. And here is your question. Good. Right, so if you have read and understood, consider the clinical examination session. Kindly begin. Yeah, uh, um, uh, first of all, when I enter, when I will into, uh, go into the room, I will yes. wash my hands. Yes. Then I will introduce myself. I'm Dr. Athar Rasool. Uh, I'm a uh, MRCS candidate. candidate here. Yes. I'm, yes. I'm supposed to exam candidate here. I'm supposed to examine your uh, knee. May I confirm your uh, name and age uh, date of birth, please? So no, after confirming age. name and age. Uh, okay. Age, name uh -huh. and age. 37 years old. Okay. And after confirmation, uh, then, then I will, yeah. Uh, then, uh, so ma'am, I will talk to you uh, as a, Candidate. As a, as a, yes. So I'm Dr. Arthur. I am here just uh, yeah, comfortable. Yes, continue, please. I'll take yeah. So I uh, so I have the to examine your uh, knee. Yes. So for that purpose. Yeah, for the, that for, for that purpose, I uh, need an exposure. And uh, because the patient should uh, wear uh, shorts uh, yes. for the examination. Yes. And I will examine you the standing cushion and uh, spine cushion and sleeping cushion on the bed. Yes. Okay. And uh, I need to examine your uh, knee movements. Okay. Pass you as well as active. So okay. I will uh, take the consent. And then after that consent, in standing cushion, I will start my examination in standing Good. cushion. Yes. In standing cushion, first of all, I will look. I will look for the alignment of the joint. I will look for the flexion or any uh, no uh, hyperextension yeah. yes. no. or, or any deformity. Yes. Well, yes. Deformity, yes. On any Yes. On deformity. I will um, look for wellness or vergus deformity. Yes. Or any swelling, any scar there, any muscle yes. wasting, yes. any uh, acute inflammatory markers, any erythema, yes. uh, any asymmetry I will check. And I will also check uh, uh, besides the patient is any uh, accessories are there for the walking aid. Very good. Okay, continue please. Yes. 
and at the end at the end i will ask a patient to walk and yes. i will observe the gait okay i will see whether he is walking uh, without any aids or then after uh, uh, examination after this inspection then i will feel and this uh, i will exam uh, this will be in the spine position yes. first of all i will ask the patient is he has any pain or is comfortable if he will tell any pain then i will offer for any energy or anything before proceeding on very good before proceeding for a uh, yes. perfection then first of uh, all i will just with the back side of my hand i will just assess the temperature yes. on the both side first on the affected then on the uh, normal side yes. then after that i will uh, measure the quarters of uh, circumference quarters of circumference whether it's a wasting any side any wasting of the muscles Okay. Then after that, I will I will palpate the patella. I will tap the patella for uh, yes. looking uh, this fusion for looking effusion. I will see any fluctuation in the uh, in the knee joint, any fluctuation behind the patella. And after that, uh, I will uh, palpate the uh, knee. Uh, I will ask the patient to keep the knee flexed at ninety degrees. Then uh, on uh, on examination, I will first uh, be, uh, see the tibial tuberosity. And then I will see the head of the fibula on the lateral side. I will see any tenderness, any irregularities are there, or I will uh, see the uh, medial and lateral side of the joint. I will palpate whether there is any tenderness or not, and then I will see the uh, posterior part, popliteal area, whether yes. there is any swelling. For to rule out bakers or some acute swelling ah, is there. Yeah. So yeah, after sure. palpating, yeah. yeah after yes. palpating, uh, all these things. If there is any finding, I will see. And uh, after that, I will uh, uh, go for a special test for the knee. I will first uh, exam. Uh, I will you first. You will do the movements the, before going yeah, on moment, to the moment, special moment, test. Yeah, movements, movements, movements. Yes. Uh, moments. Yes. Then I will check for any active and passive uh, move. First of all, I will ask the patient to move, uh, to do flexion and extension passive. Uh, active. Active. First active. active, yes. Uh, first active, then I will go for passive Good. to see the range of the moment. Then after that, I will test for the quadriceps and hamstring muscles over the knee. I will ask the patient uh, to extend my I, i'll keep uh, knee flexed and then ask the patient to extend it uh, against my force to test the quadriceps and uh, reverse uh, uh, movement to uh, test the uh, hamstring muscles then after that uh, i will do posterior sag sign test in which uh, i will just uh, in a spine position i will uh, flex the hip joint and knee joint each at 90 degrees uh, 90 degree then i will hold the heel of the patient on, with, with one hand i will see any drop in the uh, tibia in front if there is any posterior sag whether there is any posterior sag or not this is indicator of posterior cruciate ligament injury and then after that in the spine position i will go for anterior and posterior draw test I will keep the patient okay. uh, in a spine Can you cushion. Please knee flex uh, present your examination yes, findings, please. Uh, Ma'am, I exam the patient uh, name uh, A ABC, and uh, on in inspection, uh, every, uh, there was no uh, deformity, whereas or whereas no previous scars, no swelling, nothing, no erythema. On examination, there was a tenderness on the uh, medial side uh, of the joint, and uh, on examination, uh, I could found the uh, there was a, a anterior draw sign sign is positive. Okay. Anterior draw sign in case of an uh, ACL uh, ligament injury, and also uh, if there is an ACL ligament, which I will uh, go for a because time didn't allow. I will I would have go for a Lashman test for ACL also and that will also uh, tell us about the acl injury so according to your examination what are what are the what is your uh, diagnosis 
my approach in diagnosis is patient has, may have this uh, cruciate ligament injury, anterior cruciate ligament injury, or medial or lateral cruciate injury, or a complex or a complex of uh, maybe cruciate injury with medial and collateral ligament injury also. Okay. How would you confirm your diagnosis? Uh, first of all, I will go for an uh, X-ray, but the main uh, diagnosis by confirmation will be by MRI, MRI uh, knee. Right. Okay. Can you tell MRI. me what, what are the management that you can offer to the patient? First of all, we can, uh, it depends upon the injury. If uh, it's a parcel tear, we can go for physio bed rest first initially, then if we can offer them a, a, a physiotherapy. It's non or non-operative. Non operative, first of all, if, uh, in acute phase, we'll go, for, uh, we'll advise for rest and then compression bandage because of uh, the swelling. Uh, and then later on, we can go for a physiotherapy. And if it will not work, then repair or uh, repair of this, uh, basically, uh, uh, repair of uh, remental injuries. Right. If a patient fails uh, or fails to recover after conservative management, can yeah. you offer any surgical treatment? Yes, ma'am. Ma we, uh, we can first, uh, first of all, we can offer him an orthoscopy oh, to see exactly what it, yes. what exactly it is. If uh, there is a partial tear, we can repair the tendon. Or uh, if there is, a, uh, if there is a uh, this uh, complete tear, it we can go for a reconstruction. When do you think this patient would be fit again to play in the local football? Uh, usually, ma'am, it will take time. Yes. Uh, How long? After, uh, it will take time for uh, four to six months for, for initial period for healing. Then he has to go for a physiotherapy. And after yes, physiotherapy, if, yes. yeah, yeah. if after physiotherapy, if is uh, is fine, then we can allow after one year. All right, yes, approximately nine to 12 months. All right, good. Can you please tell me if time would have allowed you, how would you have completed your examination? I would have done more tests for to uh, look for uh, uh, ligamental injuries like uh, Lechman tests, uh, like vulgar virus stress tests, and uh, McMurray, McMurray tests for medial and lateral risk injuries. Okay. Uh, what else? Whenever you are examining a joint, so always mm -hmm. mention at the end joint above and joint below. Yeah, joint above and joint below. Sure. So hip joint and uh, the and ankle joint. Be, yes, ankle examination and then also complete neurovascular examination of both lower limbs. If time would have allowed you, so this you should have mentioned before yes, telling me all the findings. Okay. In your finding, you said there was tenderness, but I wanted you to, because in exam, a scenario comes and you have to tell the exam, the exam findings according to the scenario that you have read. Here, uh, your diagnosis was correct, more or less, yes. Uh, patient was having little mobility. Yes. What is the normal range of mobility of the knee joint? Ma'am, uh, normal range is, ma'am, uh, for flexion at the knee, it is 180. Uh, sorry, it is uh, one, uh, once, uh, fifth, 130. Okay. And for extension? And for extension, it is uh, 10 to 15. Degrees. Yeah. Good. Okay. Right. Thank you. Nice. Started your timer and here is your question.
slide. So if you have read and understood considering the typical care scenario, kindly tell me, how would you manage this patient now? Um, according to the scenario, uh, I think patient is suffering from uh, complication from uh, epidural anesthesia. Okay. So, uh, uh, first of all, I will inform uh, this uh, patient condition to operating surgeon and uh, anesthesiologist. Then I will position the patient upright and yes. I will give 100% oxygen and I will stop the medication in the epidural line. Very good. And, yes. and I will give uh, the inotropes uh, available, such as uh, dobutamine, adrenaline, or metamarinol. And I will monitor urine output. Yes. And and I will, I will connect the hypotensive. I will, yes. I will introduce IV fluid and, yes. uh, and, and correct the uh, shock of pressure. Okay. How much oxygen would you give considering uh, 100%. Very good. Okay. Uh, by mask or by? Uh, the be mask. Very good. Okay. Can you tell me uh, what exactly might have happened to the patient? Uh, what is your provisional diagnosis? Uh, due to epidural anesthesia, I think there is a distributed shock due to blockage of the sympathetic fiber. So yes. uh, the parasympathetic fiber uh, take the upper hand and, and for this condition, there is because cardiac output and heart rate and vascular resistance okay. and other anesthesia than, also. So yes, other yeah. than uh, other than epidural, uh, what might be the reason? Can you tell me other human a factors? Patient may be uh, suffering from... What I mean uh, to know Maybe is... due to uh, blockage of... Uh, okay, you want your uh, same blockage? Diaphragm, uh, to diaphragm and... Yes, one and, can be and incorrect, and incorrect dose uh, because it's a human factor. All right, you're giving epidural, but yes, then you don't know how much you have to give. You have not calculated the dose accordingly. Mm -hmm. One has not calculated the dose according to the weight of the patient and the comorbidities of the patient. So can you name another condition? Positioning is not correct. Oh, yes, ma'am. Not uh, incorrect positioning, and incorrect dose, and incorrect uh, drug. And um, the level at which epidural is given cannot yeah, be level. Yes. So these are the two, three problems which can be uh, also part of this. Okay. Can you tell me why is it better to give epidural rather than spinal anesthesia or general um, anesthesia? Uh, in case of epidural, it, it acts both the uh, anesthesia and uh, analgesia also. So yes. It, it, uh, the operation which uh, it's better to uh, it's uh, suitable for longer duration operation and uh, it it has the great effect in the post operative analysis so patient yes. patient uh, uh, there is early recovery profession and there is less uh, respiratory complication and deviant thrombosis can you name two surgeries in which epidural is given according to the level at which it is given um, um, uh, uh, pancreatic surgery in T4 level and, okay. um, and hip surgery T10 level. Yes. Right. And a surgery yes. and, and L1 level in the uh, thigh and right. uh, leg and L2 in um, ankle and foot and S2, G4, 5 is a perianal region. All right. Can you please tell me why is it important to uh, test the pain and the temperature of the patient when giving the epidural? Um, because uh, in the epidural, there is a local anesthetic is given. So it acts only mainly sensory fibers yes. and, and uh, less to motor fiber. So yes. sensory, so uh, pain sensation is, will go fast and temperature will go uh, last. So uh, the true sensation is uh, the uh, level of paresthesia is uh, achieved the uh, epidural drug or, yes. or in case then, of complication. Yes. And then in order to confirm the level of the block, you have to check the temperature sensation. Temperature. 
Very good. Okay. Uh, right. What kind of uh, shock occurs in case of epidural block? In, in, uh, in case of epidural shock, it's a distributed shock. Yes. Uh, How would patient due to present? blockage of sympathetic fiber? So, a patient okay. present then uh, present with bradycardia. Yes. Uh, bradycardia, hypotension, and warm periphery. Yes. Okay. If a patient is suffering from uh, cold, clammy peripheries and patient is tachycardic, what kind of shock would patient have? Then um, the patient is suffering from probably hypovolemic shock. Very good. Okay. Can you please tell me what are the uh, systemic effects of uh, giving epidural analgesia? In systemic effect, it causes uh, hypotension, decreased cardiac yes. output, yes. decreased uh, uh, vascular resistance and functional uh, reservoir capacity, and yes. it causes um, a less chance of uh, deep vein thrombosis. Yes. Very good. Very good. Okay, can you please tell me what type of inotopes would you give to the patient and why? Uh, I will give the uh, positive inotope. It's uh, mainly alpha adrenergic inotope such as yes. uh, metamarinol yes. or, or phenylephrine. Why? Because they act on, they increase the act, Increase load. the vascular resistance. On, yes, the, and they increase and, the preload. And of increase the, the preload. All right, can you please tell me what are the complications that can occur if you have given the epidural block for longer period of time? Um, um, uh, I'm sorry, I can you okay. please. You want to come back to this question later? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, right. If you have to consider the inotropes, can you tell me uh, what are the negative inotropes or what are the inotropes which are considered negative? Negative inotropes, which are uh, inotropes that uh, decrease the uh, contraction of heart, uh, such as uh, beta blocker, propanolol, etanolol, acetabutyl. Uh, these are the negative inotropes. Okay. If you have to consider the space where a uh, block is given, how is it, uh, how epidural block varies from spinal anesthesia? Uh, epidural the given, yes. uh, given in the epidural means extradural space, the uh, spinal anesthesia given in the uh, subarachnoid space. Yes. And epidural act on the uh, insertion side and uh, spinal anesthesia acts on the below the level of the insertion Very side. Very good. And um, onset time? And epidural is uh, on certain around uh, 20 to 30 minutes and spinal anesthesia is within five minutes. Yes. And uh, how is it given? There is one last difference. Uh, epidural is given to the uh, uh, epidural catheter, catheter, yes. catheter. Spinal anesthesia given in the, via the spinal cell Large volume, very good, excellent. Good, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Started the timer, and here is your question. Just two seconds left. Seven, okay. Seven seconds. Right. So if you have read and understood, consider with communication skills session. Can we begin? Okay. Uh, hello, good morning, Dr. Triasin, one of the surgical doctors. So I've been asked to talk to you about this investigation that we have arranged for you. Uh, may I know what do you know so far? Yeah. Are you a doctor, ma'am? 
Um, unfortunately, Dr. Man is busy in surgery, so uh, I'm I'm here instead of him, and I will let you know all you need to know. Yeah, I was uh, asked to do a you know, procedure today, and you know, can you please tell me about it? I have heard it's uh, put some camera through my mouth. Yeah, that's right, what you've heard. So uh, this is a procedure we call esophagogastric retinoscopy, which is known as OGD. So in this, we will insert a camera, which is the endoscope from your mouth down to your food pipe, which will go to your stomach and to your small, until it reaches your small, small bowel. In this, we will uh, relay the image to the television so we can have a look inside what's going inside you. And uh, during this procedure, we may also need to widen your uh, narrowing of the pipe. And uh, we, we may be able to take some samples from your uh, food pipe, which will help us in uh, understanding your case. And this will all be under sedation, either locally or by injecting. So you will not, not feel any pain and you may be slightly drowsy. So will you give me general anesthesia or just local? Well, uh, we, we have both options. It can be done under the local anesthesia or general anesthesia. So uh, they both have their own pros and cons. The local anesthesia, in local anesthesia, we will be going to numb your throat down, uh, numb your throat and by the spray. And in the uh, general anesthesia, we can, uh, you will be sleeping. So uh, the benefit of local anesthesia is that uh, you may straight, uh, straightly go home by yourself and you can also drive, but you won't be allowed to have hot drinks for just an hour. And in general anesthesia, uh, uh, you may need someone to accompany you and you cannot drive until, um, until the next day. Okay, is it gonna be painful? No, it will not be painful. Uh, it will be with no pain, and, but you may feel slightly drowsy. You said you're gonna cut a piece of uh, the tissue from inside my, from my stomach, uh, tummy. So, yeah, what are the risks about it? Well, so uh, every procedure comes with its own risks, as you know. So uh, they might be, uh, you might feel any sore throat, numbness or uh, sedation effects like, or you may, you're, you may get damage to your teeth while we insert the endoscope camera inside you and you can also get some infection or bleeding from the sites we take the sample from. And also uh, the major risk could also be that uh, we may be cutting through your food pipe, which may be later repaired by the surgeons. So oh these are the Is there a chance of rupture of it? Oh, well, uh, yeah, there is a chance for the rupture, but uh, I just mentioned you the risk. It doesn't always mean that you, it, you may have those risks. So uh, also you should know that we will have some skilled and, and we only have skilled doctors to do this procedure. Only they would be allowed to do mm -hmm. this procedure. Yeah. Can you please uh, add something alternatives? Yeah, there is another alternative, uh, which is known as breathing swallow. But unfortunately, we won't have, uh, we won't be able to take uh, samples of your tissue from that procedure, or we won't be able to dilate your food pipe in that procedure. So uh, yes, there is another alternative. So you are telling me that it's best for me doing this. Uh, well, in your case, I suggest you to uh, accept doing this investigation because, yeah, it is the best for you. How long is it going to take to uh, get my result of biopsy? Uh, the results will be out in two weeks and uh, we will uh, contact you after your results, after getting your results. Okay. So... Should I take, uh, can I take milk before doing this procedure? Or how about, Sorry? I, have to pro mm. how I have to prepare myself. Can I take meals before this procedure? Or how long I should get empty stomach? Um, yes, uh, so if your procedure is uh, booked for like 
uh, morning you uh, you cannot take any food or drinks after midnight but uh, you can t- have small sips of water before 2 hours of the procedure and if it's in afternoon you had just have to take uh, some light breakfast but not after 8 am okay so uh, how long i have to be in empty stomach i mean can't take food you can take food after that uh, just avoid hot I mean, things if you are before the procedure before procedure you have to take uh, food uh, food like 12 hours before the procedure 8 to 12 hours. 12 hours i cannot take food okay okay yes okay i heard you yeah thank you okay you can also uh, so you keep on slide waiting yeah doctor why yeah. i keep slide waiting yeah uh, so this celebration is due to the uh, negation of your food pipe which is uh, because uh, so it will block your regular secretion that flow flows naturally into your food pipe that's why you just mm-hmm. keep celebrating yeah is this cancer Can it, do you think is cancer uh well sorry i can't hear you no network i can't hear you very well hello yes no Yeah, come again. Yeah, so I was saying that it's still too early to confirm that it's okay. cancer or not because we still have to do some investigations on you and uh, the results would be out after two weeks and we may need some further investigations after your results. So it's early to say that it's cancer. Do you think okay. that I, since I smoke, my smoking and drinking habit has caused this cancer? uh yes well uh, you can say that uh, studies are there that have linked this uh, to cancer smoking and drinking to the cancer yes okay. can say that is which link all right okay. genetic yeah. right how would you conclude your consultation so uh, i will i just uh, i will just summarize the um, procedure for you I've just told you that what we will do is inserting the camera inside your food pipe and going down to your um, bowel to see what's happening inside your um, food pipe and just take some samples if we need to uh, understand more. And I just told you about the risks also, and uh, but it's not necessary that it would always happen. And also I've told you about the alternative which we can do, but uh, I think this is the best procedure for you, OGD. and uh, yeah in local you will be awake during the procedure and you can drive by yourself and go home alone but in the general you have to accompany somebody uh, somebody should accompany you and you cannot drive for like 24 hours and that's it do you yes. have any more questions and if you agree no, then thanks. sign the consult uh, the consent form Yeah, and if you agree to this, uh, then I'll give you the consent form. Then we can proceed with your procedure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. At the end, this because You're this welcome. is a thank you OGD consultation, so you have to make sure uh, the explanation that you are giving to the to the patient, patient understands, and then patient agrees. Uh, or you are like you have to convince the patient so patient agrees on it and patient signs the consent and at the end you can say mm. okay, i will be leaving my number with the nursing staff if you have oh, yes. to come across any other question then you can always contact yeah. me so this is the closing and okay. uh, this should be like this otherwise what i feel that you are uh, you know a lot you knew it you knew all the steps you did it well the only thing which is lacking is uh, the tone the confidence so if you'll practice more with us it definitely you'll you'll feel confident you'll feel it from inside out and you'll be able to convey the information that you are giving us with full confidence and that's that's when 
when you'll be able to yeah, come in yeah, that yeah. position, that's when you'll be successful, definitely. Yes, Dr. HK, do you Doctor, want to... Did you ask my you? name and age? No, she did not confirm. No. So, yeah, because I feel this is first time she's presenting and she's a little shy. Yeah. That's the only reason. That's why I feel uh, in her tone, you can see she's a little shy. But doesn't matter. She'll practice with us and she'll gain the confidence which she's lacking. So this is very important to confirm the identity because this patient is sent by the GP and patient had to meet your consultant who happened to be busy. You did answer very well that he is busy and now you have to take his or her place. But then uh, you have to confirm if you are talking to Mr. Tom or Smith or whatever. So and the confirm the yeah. yeah. So introduction and conclusion. Very important. Thank and you. in the middle of that. Good. Good.